Hey everybody, welcome back to another creative tutorial. Today we're going to be going over the Colorize Mask Editing tool and what it does and how it works. This is a remake of an older video, just updated better information and with better audio. And just uh, to give credit, the pose reference that I'm using is from the pose archives on Instagram, which I will link below. They aren't really safe for work, so if you're younger, I don't recommend clicking that link, but if you're older and you need some good reference models, they're a really good option um, for reference photos. They do a very good job. I'm not affiliated with them or anything, I'm just giving them credit where credit's due. Alright, so before we do anything right now, I have the tool options separated so we can see everything for the Colorize Mask Editing tool and we can see the layers at the same time, because we're going to want to do that a little bit later on. The Colorize Mask Editing tool is over here by the eyedropper, or the color sampler, and you have to make sure that the liner that you want to use is the layer that you have selected. So this figure here is already set up on one layer by itself, and we can go ahead and use that layer to use the tool. So when you're ready, go ahead and click on the layer that you want to use for the Colorize Mask Editing tool. As you can see, it basically masks everything out except the lines. If you zoom in, you can kind of see um, the line work here. It looks a little like a dark gray. If we turn this off, we can see that the lines are, are there. It all lines up just fine. Looks great, right? So now we want to add the color. And before we add the color, you might be going, what is this? What is this going to do? And this is basically going to allow you to throw a couple lines of color down hit a button and it's going to fill it in for you without doing much work at all. The only downfall is the more colors you have, the bigger the file, it might take a little longer to process, but it's still much faster in the long run than doing it all by hand. And then if you want to make changes to the color, you didn't waste, you know, a good 10 minutes filling in the shirt or the pants or whatever, you could just quickly erase the line and put another color in. So we're going to use this purple for her skin. Uh, we're just gonna put that there, and then I'm gonna use blue for her shirt. Oh, that's our belt. Do that, do that, and there. And we're gonna hit update. This might take a minute, or not really a minute, it might take a couple seconds, so I'm gonna just fast forward to the final result. Okay, so we have the final result. As you can see, we have a lot going on already. We're going to choose, uh, turn off edit keystrokes before anything else so we can see what actually happened. So the pink basically filled everything in except where I marked for the blue. And we can fix that a couple different ways which I will show you in a little bit. However, the places where I marked for blue, apart from the center here, turned out pretty good. It filled in everything for the shirt. And all I had to do was do like what, four strokes? One, two, three, four, yeah, it's five if you count down here which is pretty good. That took no time at all. So now we want to go ahead and say, all right, well, this is a good start, but we want to make some changes. So we're going to turn off show output. We're going to turn on edit keystrokes. So that looks exactly like it was in the beginning. First, I want to make this area transparent. So we're going to hit this dark, well, I already had the color here because I was doing some testing, but I'm going to take it this dark purple. I'm going to mark everywhere that I don't want any other color, to, like anywhere no pinks, no purples, no any other color I pick outside of this figure. We're going to go down to keystrokes and we're going to hit transparent for that color. And now we're going to hit update and we're going to wait like a couple seconds for that to process and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so now that it has processed, we're going to turn on show output. So we want to see what that looks like and we're going to turn off edit keystrokes. So the purple has basically been labeled as transparent and everything that's marked with purple will not have a any color filling it in. All right, so that pink background is gone. And here in the middle, where her arm is basically making a empty space, that's no longer filled in with blue. And that's perfect. But now we want to kind of change how the pants are going, because we don't want those to be pink or purple or whatever color you want to call this. But we don't want to put another color in there just yet. All right, so I'm going to use this part of the line art to show you how this Part works and give it a little bit more, bit more of a proper example. So let's say we're coloring with the skin and we put, oops, I added the keystrokes, 
put that there and you make the dark gray for the hair you know we're going to do the cleanup first so if i accidentally go out of the line i actually do a couple different places because it may not work in every area but just enough we're going to update that all right we're turning the edit keystrokes off as you can see even though we have this area outside the line art as transparent with the dark bluish purple the black being slightly outside the lines with the keystrokes is kind of making it bleed out there so if we change the cleanup to a much smaller amount it can actually get worse all right so as you can see it, it's not too bad as uh, the smaller cleanup amount but you can see i got some extra bleed through here and here even though oh, i have some there it's still it's not really making anything any better the higher the cleanup value the better or the less likely you're going to have issues like this now because of my line art already being pretty clean i don't think i'm going to have as big as an, as big of an issue as some people might um i mean good line art is going to really save you in the long run no matter what but you still don't want these little areas here because you, if you miss it you have to go back and erase it manually after you convert the paint layer you don't really want that so if we may, uh, boost this cleanup back up we hit update all right it's a little um, this up here has gotten a little bit better you can see even though the black is there it's not as dominant compared to the pink we can actually clean up even more and we can actually even lower the gap hint or raise it depending on the results and use it in conjunction with the cleanup and kind of give better results for how we want this color to be now this is really in my opinion not as necessary usually just laying down the color within the line art as is works perfectly fine but if you have some fine details, you may need to tweak these two things a little bit to get the best result you can. And you may still need a little bit of manual cleanup in the end, but if this is something that you really need to kind of fine tune, if your line art is crazy or whatever it is you're working on, um, just has a lot of detail or information that um, you really don't want to spend too much time cleaning up on, this is something to kind of make your life a little easier. Alright, so obviously the cap close hand being lowered isn't helping. So what that gap close is doing anyway is it's basically saying um, the gap between the two colors, do you want that to be increased or decreased? And obviously we lowered it, so we are reducing the space between the two colors. We don't really want that. So even though the cleanup is 100% and we have the transparency colors here, it's ignoring that. For the area i don't have anything it's saying all right well there's no transparency line here we're going to take this color and let it bleed out by reducing that gap close hint so if we actually raise this up we're going to go to drastic amount because it's going to change the look completely all right so we're turning the sh uh, edit keystrokes off so you can see it actually cleaned up a lot for the hair color but with um, by um, making that gap hint or, get, or closing that gap much dress much more drastically than before but it kind of went a little too far with the hair up here so if you were to go ahead and tweak this you probably could get a really nice result by going maybe within the 100 200 range and getting a, a, a cleaner result for that and not having these colors bleed anywhere where they shouldn't go which is pretty nice in my opinion so let's say I don't want something, one of these colors anymore, right? Let's say the transparency color is good, the hair color is good, but the skin color that I'm using this pink, I don't want it, I can remove it. And it's actually going to remove all those strokes related to that color. This is really helpful because if you go and erase it, but you leave like one pixel of that color left, it will uh, update and with that one pixel of color and it will be a splotch in the middle. And you may not want that. So by removing it completely, if I go ahead and hit update, it's probably going to turn everything gray, but whatever. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to turn edit keystrokes. So yeah, it actually kept the hair strokes very well. And it did bleed a little bit here, but again, I do have a gap here. So I could probably change the gap close hint. Maybe I want it tighter and I could raise it up even more. And 
then the hair will be perfectly fine. There is no leakage anywhere except here, which is because I have a gap in the line art, not a big deal. So that's actually a pretty good result right off the bat by just removing the pink, updating it, and seeing how that hair color is gonna go. So now uh, I wanna show the edge detection. So the edge detection is basically gonna say, you want this area filled in. There's a lot of black lines. How far are we gonna detect this edge for this color? So we're actually going to bring some of this purple back in. I'm going to make it a little bit more purple. I'm going to turn the edit keystrokes on so we can actually apply this. All right, so we're going to turn that off. So as you can see with the edge detection on, I have it at zero pixels, so it's not really detecting too much. This is actually a pretty good result as well. It does bleed into the hair a little bit, but again, that's because I have to modify my cleanup and my gap close hint, so we're just going to leave that be but we want to see what the edge detection does if we increase this. So let's go up to uh, 69, we'll go up to 70. We're going to update that. All right, so before I do anything else, I want to show you what this looks like with the edge detection. So you can actually see I chose 70 pixels. It's going 70 pixels past the line art, which is why it looks blurry. So these black splotches here are the line art areas and it's spreading that value of these are the edges we need to detect for this distance of that line art. So if I take the edit keystrokes off, you can kind of tell um, like this area can't have any color really and there's almost no color here. So the higher the edge detection, the less color that is going to be in that area. But if I turn this down, we'll actually give this a good 15 pixels. All right, so with a smaller edge detection, it actually brought back in that color. Now there is a little bit of strange bleeding going on here. I'm not gonna worry about that because again, we have to modify these settings a little bit. So if I go to edit keystrokes, you can actually see here, the blurry side of the line art is kind of, it's not as big before as it was before. It's actually shrunk down a little bit and as you can see as it's shrunk down it's detecting a smaller uh, distance from that line art which is good if you have a lot of fine detail that you want a much smaller edge detection because you don't want um, these colors to just go crazy and just not be included because as we noticed when we had a really high edge detection um, it wasn't allowing the color to go there all right so the four pixel uh, the edge detection. I can turn this off. It looks much cleaner. I still have a little bit of bleed here, but I have the strokes still going outside the line art, so that's fine. It looks pretty good, I think. You know, and obviously, depending on what you're working on, you're going to want to play with the settings a little bit. So if you go and you change this and you update edit keystrokes, it will update the edge detection. So if I want it higher, I can turn that off and turn it back on and it will update accordingly. If I want it lower, I can turn that off and give it a second to load and then turn it back on. It's going to give me a very fine detail of the edge detection. It's going to basically detect almost no edge really, very thin. So that way you can kind of give, it, give yourself an idea of how this is going to look before you actually commit to updating the um, strokes and the final result. Just something to keep in mind when you're using this tool. All right, so let's say we're done. This is the final look that we want for the file. Everything looks good. We're going to, I'm gonna put my tool options back over here where I want them. And we're gonna right click on the colorized mask layer. We're gonna to go to convert and convert to paint layer. It takes like a split second, not even that and we have a new paint layer. So now I can do everything that I normally would do. So if I, oops, I have the tool on still. If I want to lock it, I can lock it and I can start changing, the, you know, putting more strokes in here. If I want to alpha inheritance it in a different group, I can do that. I can unlock it, lock the layer, add layer styles. I can do anything that I normally would do with any other paint layer. It is a normal layer now. So if I want to go back in and say, all right, we're going to add some of this stuff here. Maybe you want to add in some painted details somewhere, add the shading, whatever you normally want to do. 
you can do that um, after you convert the layer to a paint layer. And you're done. That's pretty much it for the colorized mask tool. The only downfall about it, like I said earlier, is you might have to wait a couple minutes. Well, not really a couple minutes, but like a minute or so for it to process, depending on how many colors you have, how big the liner is, how big the file is. If you're okay with waiting, then this is a perfect tool for you. And like I said, if you have um, purple tunnel or something, you don't want to spend hours coloring in the same spot. This is a really nice way to give your hand a break. Alright, I hope you guys learned something in this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I'll do my best to answer them. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.